Hey guys, uh, welcome to Stationeers. And it just became daylight outside, so I figure there's no better time to start this video because the nighttime you can barely see anything. Um, excuse me. Um, so yeah, just uh, I'm gonna teach you guys about rockets and motherships here in a bit, and I just wanted to kind of show you some of the rocket engines and some of the settings you can change on those. And obviously, there's my. Uh, my mothership, my latest iteration of one, unfortunately it has uh, uh, not fared well with the gravity update. So I previously built a ship like this in another save and it uh, it worked just fine. Of course gravity was not affecting motherships at the time so you know here we are. The devs implement, implement physics and we all suffer. Oh well. Uh, but this is my mothership and you know some of the basic requirements here you have to have gyros I believe that helps the mothership turn uh, when you're flying and then the rocket engines actually do all the lifting and movement uh, here's our command chair you have to have one of those and see it gives you these nice indicators tells you what's going on with the ship um, you know if things are working or anything like that uh, and then you need to have engines lots of engines so remember there are six degrees of freedom with rocket engines so you've got to have rocket engines everywhere. Uh, so we've got some on the bottom. That's actually going to be, you know, lifting the craft up. You got some on the sides. That's for lateral movement. Uh, you got the one on the rear. That's your main propulsion. You'll have to have some engines on top for downward movement, and then obviously with the fuel tanks and the plumbing and all that good stuff. Here's some on the other side for moving and then you've got engines on the front to stop and that's actually pretty important because these things can get moving pretty quickly so that's kind of the real down and dirty basics of a mothership and obviously this thing is very much a work in progress and it's going to take a lot of time to get it finished I couldn't tell you how many hours I've spent on this thing so far um, but I know that the the devs really broke the crap out of it with gravity so I have an idea on how to fix that, and that's what I'm going to show you guys today. So there are three sizes of rocket engine. You've got the tiny, um, which is labeled as small. If you look at it, that's labeled tiny here. And then this one is labeled small, which is labeled actually medium in the uh, fabricator. And you know anywhere else you can build it, it's labeled medium. So that's small, even though it's tiny. That's medium, even though it's small, which I know is confusing. And then you have the Jagunda engines, which are, you know, for forward movement and things like that. Much larger model. It basically takes up two whole uh, grid squares. And there's a lot more stuff on the back here you can mess with. You can actually change the setting on this one manually and turn it off and on. Uh, but, you know, uh, basically when you wire all the engines into the command chair, they will work depending on which direction you're moving. And the controls translate pretty much perfectly as you think they would from your space uh, your general movement controls to the ship itself except uh, I don't think you have pitch right now when you're on Mars or the moon but that may be coming in a future update you know uh, work in progress all that good stuff okay so <clears throat> running through the setup here you have to have these straight pipes on the rocket engine th engines themselves otherwise they will not work right and sometimes you have to actually uh, remove the engine and put it back down and make sure that all your connections come up good. Uh, if you don't, then it may or may not work. Uh, but you can turn it off and on manually, which is cool, and you get a nice little purple flame, which, yeah, that's cool, but we need to do a little bit better than that if we're going to get off the ground. And it's the same thing for the big one, only the flame is just a bit bigger. Oh, God, I didn't change the setting on that one. Um, yeah, it gets rather hot back here, by the way. Uh, go figure, you know, rocket exhaust gets hot. But, uh, could have fooled me. So, anyways, um, I've got my fuel set up here. It's pretty rudimentary, you know, pressurized tank with fuel mixture in it. A valve and something to let me know how much is left in the pipes, which, let's put some more back in there. And I think that'll be good for now. Uh, so here's your good fuel mixture. Uh, I actually use this in the welder as well as my rocket engines and I've done the testing on this fuel mixture and it is the most efficient. Um, 
any one or two percent in either direction and you get less thrust out of the engine and less uh, complete combustion so obviously less power and you know Jeremy Clarkson doesn't approve of that so here we go uh, but 64 percent volatiles or H2 whichever you prefer to call it and 36 percent O2 is your best mix uh, it gives you the most complete burn and the most thrust so you know set your valves to that and forget it unless you're welding inside an atmosphere for some reason and I totally screwed up all my logic <clears throat> so I guess I'll have to go and fix that okay so right here this logic writer reads our lever and all it's gonna do is turn our engine on and off uh, that's pretty simple so you know just reads lever and the writer is gonna write to the engine tiny and turn it on or off depending on what this lever reads so we pull the lever the engine comes on yay it works that one's just reading the setting of the engine but uh, I'll set that back up anyways even though we know what the setting is gonna be uh, and my cat's meowing at me I don't know if you guys can hear that but he does that a lot he's pretty needy lately um, alright so one thing I noticed with this new gravity update is that the engines put out a constant thrust and if you just bolt it up to the craft and go it'll work but it's only gonna put out a small amount of thrust so what you have to do is uh, see we're at 2.4 megapascal and if you look closely you can see uh, 1% and 2% remaining H2 and O2 now that's not really a complete burn but it's about as close as you can get uh, but obviously this is happening by tick so it's just you know kinda ticking down slowly so that's sort of your normal engine usage and look at the fuel usage on it it's not very much uh, which is great but that's not gonna lift this big behemoth off the ground and I had four of these and it wouldn't even budge um, so what I think I'm gonna do is put four of them and wire them up individually so I can just turn them on and have them at a set power at all times to give the ship enough force to hover then I'm gonna have two more that are actually used for maneuvering uh, that's gonna involve a lot of wire <coughs> and separate circuits because if they're all on the same circuit then all the engines on the bottom will fire at the same time and we don't want that so <coughs> For the power setting, we are actually going to come over here. We got this memory unit set to 100, which is cool. Um, you know, that's uh, we're going to use that in our math function here. We've got a dial set to 50 as the maximum, and that's actually what you want. If you go over 50 on this, it's actually going to not increase any thrust or anything like that. I think it just increases your fuel consumption, which is not good because loading these things with fuel is a pain in the butt um, as you can see I've got tanks here tank mounts and a, a volume pump so I can pressurize the the ship with fuel you know put fuel in the storage tanks and basically you have to switch out tanks and run back from here run over there switch them out you know on and on and on until you get dizzy so we want to try and save fuel if possible so what we're gonna do with the math here <coughs> to get these hovering engines set up is take the dial whatever number that dial is putting out and you know so it's putting out zero right now I'm gonna multiply it by 100 and that's gonna give us our uh, setting for the engine itself so you set it to one you get 100 two three four you get it 400 and so on and so forth you know basic math pretty easy stuff um, so you set it to 1, and that's basically the stock setting. Uh, this writer is just going to write the setting to the engine. So we can actually change it here and show you what's going on with it. Uh, setting, there we go. Alright, so we're all set, and why are you on? Okay, you just came on for some reason. Alright, cool. Well, let's see what happens here. Is that going to change? Turn it on again? No. Okay, good had a slight malfunction. Okay, so stock setting is 1. Make sure we got enough fuel. We're good. Um, the stock setting is 1. And that gives you 2.4 megapascal of thrust, which is cool, but it's not enough. Uh, we need more. So you dial it up to 2, 
and you'll notice 4.8 and if you notice something here it doubled your amount of thrust doubled with increasing the dial by one notch and basically increasing the setting by 100 so you increase it to 10 and we should have 24 megapascals which that's looking a little bit better you know and that's that's going to be quite a bit of thrust especially if you got four of these for hovering engines but if you look at our fuel consumption it is consumed quite a bit quicker um, so basically that's how this circuit is working and it goes all the way up to 50 which just gets pretty crazy so that's 20 is 48 megapascal let's go all the way to 50 and see what happens here just because we can all right so that's 50 you got 121 megapascal of thrust notice your fuel consumption heating it up pretty quickly so if you had four of these it might be a bit of an issue uh, so let's turn that back down to 10 just to let's do this save fuel if we can I'm trying not to blow myself up today so um, you know I'm gonna try and not have to refill these tanks because recently when I refilled them they instantly combust and blow up into my face and it's not fun um, okay so we got a plenty of fuel left but if you notice there the the fuel the thrust increased quite a bit when you increase the pressure setting of the engine itself. Now, the bigger engines, which is something, this is something I've noticed that's kind of funny here. If you go to the bigger engines, let's turn this down to zero. Uh, let's see, right to rocket engine small. That still confuses me. And we're going to go setting. Cool, it's not on. <clears throat> gonna get a rocket engine small here. That's gonna be the on button. Alright, cool. So notice something kind of funny here between the small and the larger engines. The thrust is the same. But look at your fuel consumption. Considerably higher. Go to ten. Thrust is the same. But using up a lot more fuel. And that's why I think these smaller engines are going to be better for hovering. Because um, the fuel consumption goes up quite a bit, but you get more thrust out of this one. Or the same thrust, I think. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the case or not. The, the amount of gas is being ejected may just be greater, and that's what gives you greater thrust. Uh, I'm not a rocket scientist, but I've played plenty of KSP, and I kind of think that's how it's going to work. So you will get more thrust for the same pressure from this larger engine but uh, you won't need it for hovering necessarily so I'm going to choose the smaller engines for that uh, let's see so that's pretty much all I know about the engines themselves and the same is actually true for the big daddy over here it's kind of the same thing uh, you know you get the same amount of pressure for a setting but you get a lot of thrust off of that thing obviously because it's just moving so much fuel um, so one more thing about the mothership is you have to have one of these which is a stellar anchor and basically this does exactly what you think it would do uh, you turn this on and it stops the ship from moving which is actually very important because if you get into some uh, well it used to be in the past when you got to a place you wanted to stop uh, the ship would actually just float away if you bumped it too hard so you have to turn on the stellar anchor and then disable power to actually stop it from moving so, I mean, that's all I know about rocket engines, and uh, at least as far as this game is concerned. And, you know, that'll be some good information for you guys. Uh, pardon the mess here. You know, genius at work. But anyways, got to uh, got the whole messy desk Einstein thing going on. But if you notice right here, I've got my gases are at 14C right now. I've been cooling them down from uh, 20C and the way I'm actually managing this to keep from blowing myself up is uh, by putting them in my waste tank here and then pumping in a bunch of the cold atmosphere from Mars. Did you see how cold it is? Yeah. So I'm pumping that into the tank and it's slowly bringing the temperature down. And I get CO2 off of it, so that's always good. Um, but that's pretty much it for that one. I'm going to let that roll. i got some water chilling in here. I'm gonna throw that into. Uh, I'm gonna throw that into the mix here soon. Uh, this is actually my semi-automated furnace. So basically, what happens is 
Um, if you put your setting in here for the pre desired pressure of the furnace it, and pull that lever, it will actually add fuel until it reaches that pressure. You can walk off and leave it and just come back and hit the button to activate it later. Whenever you're done smelting what you need to smelt, you open this valve, it pumps, puts all the exhaust gas into that radiator setup, and when it gets to 500C, it will actually pump it out into my waste tank setup. So that's actually how I have that set up, and I guess I'll just give you guys a, uh, a base tour here. Made as well, I've got you all. Um, Scott mainly reviewed this game not long ago, and you know he didn't have some great things to say about it, but I've got about 300 hours in it, and I love this thing. So uh, this is my automated furnace setup. So basically you put your ore in here, and it will spit out ingots in my construction area. Um, and vacuum all the gases up and send them to my filtration so I don't miss a drop of that and this is actually for generating my nitrogen it feeds into the same room and basically if I just pull the lever it will sit here and cycle the silic this uh, two pieces of silicone all the time and you get a ton of free nitrogen which may be a bit point since Mars actually has some nitrogen in the atmosphere but every little bit helps uh, this is actually an exterior view of my greenhouse. And I'll kind of go in there and show you guys the logic on that. Uh, let's go through my patented double airlock because Mars atmosphere and all that. So basically I leave that vent on at all times and as soon as I close the door it gets rid of the atmosphere in here. So I don't have to worry about it getting into my base. <coughs> so let's turn that off. Come through the airlock here. And I decided to go with a double airlock this time because it is actually big enough to support uh, or you know actually contain three portable containers, which is useful. All right, so um, light switch, of course. Let's go ahead and helmet suit because I don't opened. need that anymore. Now we've got a charging station here, all my batteries. This one lone power controller here is actually for charging nuclear batteries because they charge faster in here than they do in the charging arrays. Uh, this is my electrical room. Currently I've got an issue with the air conditioning in here. It's just a little bit chilly. Temperature low. I think I'll go back outside. Temperature low. Yeah, let me get out of here. I had to turn my greenhouse power back on. So, I've got my batteries in here. The transformer, this one is only for because they pull so much power now. Um, that one is for, I need to relabel that actually. It's for my filtration. And I hate that they haven't even captured it. So, I'm yeah, glad I caught that. So I got my transformers here for my fabrication lab, hallway, and airlocks, and then my greenhouse. So let's go back out here this door. This is my fabrication lab, which has a fully controlled atmosphere, temperature, and pressure mixture control. Um, got my filtration set up. That's air conditioning right there. That's the 25 watt passive cooler, which still works great, by the way. You can see it'll just cool right off. And it is cool. That is one of. That makes me very happy. That design is still solid. Uh, I've got full room of evacuation if I need it, so I can pull the gases for the entire room. Um, got all the machines a boy could want, and all the materials too. Um, I'm playing it creative here, so don't think I'd try to mine all this, I probably would have killed myself. Um, dual electronics printer, so you can print two things of cable coils at the same time, suit storage, you know, it's all here, and bless the man who I don't know who it was, but I found out about the stacker from somebody on the forums. That thing is a lifesaver. Um, I love the stacker. Oh, and let me show you where the ingots actually come out. So all the ingots from the furnace array drop right here. And then I can just go about and do my printing and making stuff and whatever I need to do. So there's the fabrication lab. Let's see. Of course, I got some skylights here. It's always fun. 
Um, now onto the greenhouse. Now, the thing with the greenhouse is that <coughs> I have it set up to where this hallway is an airlock. So, if that door is open, that door will always be locked. And it's the same thing with the switch. So you get the switch locks this door, so we're not going to let that atmosphere drain into here. Opens this door. And I actually keep the atmosphere in my greenhouse with these kind of percentages at it, and I always keep it at less than my normal base pressure. Because that way the air from inside the greenhouse will never leak the CO2 back out into the base and uh, and whatnot. You know, it'll just stay in here. It's, always, it's, it's a negative pressure as compared to the rest of the base. So any air that goes into this room will flow in here. Any excess gets drained off and recycled through filtration. Uh, so I've got a lot of logic control in this. Basically, it's fully automated. And as you can see, I got a little mess with my circuits, but I don't care. It works for me. Alright, so this is all my wonderful logic here. All the chips are color coded. There's your MO temperature controls, and anything red or brown is going to be uh, air conditioning related or temperature related because I've got brown over here for these pipes. They're filled with pollutants, so that just works out. Purple is pressure, gray is CO2, white is O2 filtration, and the blue is going to be water pressure. <coughs> All these green chips over here are for the door controls. Um, and this math unit is for changing settings on the pressure-based, uh, pressure or percentage-based uh, settings here, like the O2 percentages has to be in decimal form, otherwise the units go nuts. So that's what that math unit is for. Uh, I've got my food processing station over here, microwave and region processor. I've got plenty of wheat. I've grown all that. Need to go make some more cereal bars soon. Haven't experimented with any of the other recipes yet, but oh well. Uh, automatically pressurizing the water tank, which the reason it's stored in here is so it can be up to temp and doesn't kill the plants whenever you put it in. And here's room for 100 plants. And uh, I recently had 100 soybeans growing in here, but unfortunately the air conditioner was not able to keep up. So I think that I'm either going to have to beef that thing up a little bit or reduce the plant count to maybe 60 or 80 max. But it's all handled automatically, and I don't have to worry about it. I plant stuff and walk away and come back and it'll be grown up. But... Um, yeah, so that's a tour of my base, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the rocket tutorial, and the base tutorial, if you want me to upload this to the workshop, I certainly can do that, and I'll post the link in the comments. Alright guys, um, any tips or suggestions, just let me know. Hope you enjoy. Bye.